Welcome back to Ramping Up Your English, a support program for intermediate level English learners. You can watch and download this program and others by visiting archive.org slash details slash Rogue TV. Choose Ramping Up Your English from the sidebar or choose my name, John Letts. You can see this program on Channel 15 in Ashland and Channel 182 on Charter Cable. It's on at 8 a.m. Mondays and 7.30 p.m. on Thursdays. This is Episode 17, Segment 2. We have a saying in English, a picture is worth a thousand words. And that's never been so true as when trying to communicate the awesome beauty we see from the California Zephyr crossing the Rocky Mountains. Here are a few tips on using English to convey at least part of this jaw-dropping scenery. We could say that the California Zephyr travels through big mountains, deep canyons, and forests during the old Rio Grande route, and that accurately sums up the terrain we saw in part two. However, we can ramp up our use of adjectives as well as certain nouns and verbs to better provide us a picture in the mind of our reader or listener. Now let's start with Ruby Canyon. The landscape there was layered with rock of different colors. The erosion had formed odd shapes in the landscape, resembling huge buildings like palaces and castles. Let's use some words to make a description that will tell your reader why this landscape made you feel so much awe in this place. Now we can use action words here, tower, heap, and uplift, size words, grand, towering, soaring, and shape words, cathedrals, palaces, pyramids, sheer walls, and layered, curvaceous, how's that for a word? Color words, we can use beige, dusky, amber, vanilla, vermilion, ochre, rose, ruby, because all of these things were there, right? So let's put some of these uh, together in a way that paints a picture in the mind of the native English speaker. We passed along sheer walls of ruby-colored canyons. The landscape towered above the train, confronting our vista with cathedrals and palaces of ochre stone. The ground was uplifted into pyramid forms here, showing layer upon layer of rich color. We saw bands of beige atop those of rose, vanilla, vermilion, turmeric, and finally covered with a dusky rose hue. These colorful bands were heaped upon each other, forming castles around one bend, then diminished to small pyramids around the next. We had to crane our necks at times in hopes of seeing the summit of these giant imposing features. Other times our vision was funneled to bright uprises and broad canyons in the distance. So, we've used some very descriptive imagery and some very specific vocabulary to describe Ruby Canyon and the surrounding area. The shape words we used are easy enough to learn, but the color words, that's another matter. Now, one suggestion for finding color beyond the primary colors a beginning, beginner uses is to use one of these paint chips that you might find in the section of a home improvement store. Take a look at the color chips, the cards they show available for the colors of their paint. Look at the names assigned to these hues, and you'll find there are scores of ways to say yellow or red, for example. Now let's picture the section of the California Zephyr's route east of Glenwood Springs. The train here travels through the majestic Glenwood Canyon, following every twist and turn of the Colorado River far below the level of the tracks. So we have some action words here again. We have soar, tower, sprawl, some shape words, sheer rock face, canyon, steep, deeply eroded, chiseled out, bare, chasm, ribbon of water, craggy, sprawled, bowl-shaped. We have descriptive words here, frozen, iced over, bare, naked, frosted, translucent, etched along the edges, frozen blanket, stretching, steep, and some color words, bright, white, blushed, milky colored, amber, and turmeric. 
Now this is the entrance to Glenwood Canyon. So this is what we're describing here. The amber-colored sheer rock soared skyward from the train window. Its craggy face towered above the train, guarding the deep canyon that lay ahead. A scattering of cone-shaped trees brought life to these vertical slopes. The river that had once been barely below the level of the train soon dropped downward, running like a ribbon of water in a deepening canyon far below the side of the tracks. The clear water formed ice along the steep banks that was milky colored in its thin parts and bright white where it was thick. Now and then a naked aspen tree stood like a skeleton along the river. The ribbon of river now filled a deep chasm, more ice etched along its distant banks. The translucent icy shoulders intruded further into the stream, at times bridging across the clear moving water. Finally, we came over a rise of, and the land sprawled out, stretching suddenly to distant peaks, forming a kind of high-altitude bowl. Here, the river leveled off as well and was covered completely at times with frozen crust and still pools and others. With some descriptive words beyond the basic words of a beginner, you can ramp up your description to better communicate what you saw in the video clips of the California Zephyr during the section that runs between Utah and Colorado. So how do you get command of such words? Well, you've already started by watching this program. Reading about trains and railroads as well as watching videos about them can expand your vocabulary as you see and hear words like these used to describe special landscapes. You'll become more confident in using these descriptions when you speak or write. I've posted a list of these words as well as these sentences on my website. Go to letscreate.org and click on the episode 17 link. You can also click on the link to repeat the video clip we saw in part one. And that's all for segment two. We'll return with segment three right after this. This is a Ramping Up Your English book review. If you've taken an interest in the theme of trains and railroads, you can grow that interest with Trains Magazine. This is for the serious rail fan or just anyone who loves trains. Each issue has a main theme, this one about western steam engines clearing the tracks of snow and ice. Since the featured events were for our photographers, there are incredible pictures in this special winter and holiday issue. This issue also features Union Station in Kansas City, a beautifully remodeled historic train station served by Amtrak Southwest Chief during its nighttime run between Chicago and Los Angeles. Trains Magazine is also a good source of finding railroad museums closest to your home. If you want to know more, visit their website. I found my copy at a newsstand and I just couldn't resist buying it. This has been a Ramping Up Your English book review. I'm John Letts.